my favorite track from next is uh, I still love you I like uh, <laughs> yeah yeah that man that RL man that guy uh he's 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 one of the guys man that uh as fast as we could make something he was writing to it oh so he was a lyricist he's a yeah as fast and, and him and my brother Cliff and and at that time Eric like so when I got when I got to started uh, working with KG, I had, you know, my thing was, okay, I didn't want to be in the flex anymore, but I, Cliff and Eric had done some records. Um, what was the record they did? They did uh, Represent and um, Saturday with uh, Wes and Chris Joe, another uh, keyboard player from Patterson, man, that's dynamic. And uh, man, so I was trying to get, well, I'm not trying. Kay had agreed that he was going to uh, do a deal with Cliff and Eric as a group, like John A, but just like a male version. Oh, okay, okay. And uh, he played those records. As uh, a matter of fact, he used the records on this group he had called Format, uh, with Otis and Fred and, and Daquan, and I can't remember the other guy's name. They were signed to Motown. And he did the records that Cliff and them had done, done in the basement. So I was like, when I got in, I started bringing, hey, come on, Wes, Cliff, E, and everybody that was over there, like, you know, I'm over here, you know, and I, I'm while I'm working with Kay, I'm telling them about. And when they came in and played the records, it spoke for itself. But unfortunately, Eric got a call uh, from Teddy uh, Chauncey. I don't know how, when or whatever. And um, he went on to Black Street, you know, <laughs> and so that was it for Cliff. But then Cliff was actually, um, Cliff was actually, it was him and Vernell as Coffee Brown. Fonz was a, 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 a solo singer. Mm -hmm. And we did the showcase, uh, Cliff and Vernell as Coffee Brown, Fonz as a solo artist, and Jaheen. And now, crazy enough, they passed on Jaheim. And then they told them, they said, they like the look of Fonz and Vernell together, you know, so would you be open? We'll sign the group if you um, replace the guy with the solo guy and the girl. And, uh, you know, being my brother, man, I, I understood the business. Um, I just felt bad because I was like, wow, oh, man, this guy, okay, Eric left him on Black Street. Then we got him in this situation, Coffee Brown. And, you know, then the song was great and everything. And we go on and they say, no, nah, they didn't want him in the group. They want this guy. So, so Cliff was like, hey, man, you know, all right. He said, I, I said I'd rather see them get the deal than me be like, nah, man, Kate, okay, let's go somewhere else. So he stepped aside and finally jumped in and him and Vernell came uh -huh. to group. Wow. Yeah. I mean, okay. Because I know I, I interviewed uh, Van Allen. And she mentioned that they interviewed, they sang separately, but that they, 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 it wasn't supposed to be Fonz, but um, it, it was Clive that made the decision. And, you know, AG's like, well, well, you, you can't turn Clive down. We met, I remember Vernell um, from the Vulture tour. When I started uh, working with Kay, they went on tour. And uh, the Vulture tour. This is what this is the uh, groups. The opening group was a uh, they were called the Basement, if I remember correctly. It was Genuine, Missy Elliott, oh, Timbaland, yeah. okay. and Player. Play I think they were the signed the Gi uh, to the Devante. Uh, Devante. Yeah. So they opened the show. Then it went to Adina Howard, and then from Adina Howard, it went to Naughty by Nature. For Naughty by Nature, it went to Bad Boy, which is big, Craig G, uh, <laughs> I mean, Craig, uh, uh, Craig Mack, yeah. Total. And then from Puff, from Bad Boy, it went to Mary J. Blige. And then from Mary J. Blige, Jodeci ended the show. Wow. Oh, I ain't never seen so many tour buses in my life. <laughs> but, yeah. I, you know, and here today, I, I, I'm, I'm sure there's probably been a tour closer to that magnitude, but none of that I've heard of. Mm -hmm. And then no, like we went on tour, Kate was like, hey man, you know, 
uh, we need to go out and because we got, I got I signed all these groups and you know we need to work on these records and everything and we just started working together and I was like hey man uh, I, I can't go on tour you know you making money every night out you know unless we doing some production or something and I'm putting something in a budget and so Kate was like he said uh sorry so I went back the next day and he gave me a check for sixteen thousand dollars. And he said, hey, well, let's hold you over for a couple of months, you know, so we can go on the road and work on this music. <laughs> <laughs> My bag was packed, but I'm saying. <laughs> and so we built a studio and on, I was on a production uh, tour bus and we turned that back room, we built a studio. And so we that whole tour you know, we were riding from city to city working on music for these artists that we just signed. Okay, okay, for Divine Mill for uh, on the mm -hmm. Arista. Mm -hmm. And then Chris was writing as you you guys were producing? Chris, well, well, we put all the music together and then when the tour was over, we had a whole bunch of stuff. Like, the way that I saw KG doing it, um, he wanted to have enough of different things so that once we started working on the projects, we was, we would still be creating, mm -hmm. but he had all this other music that if they heard something they wanted to write to, they could be doing that while, you know, we're working on something else. And that's literally how it went. Like we always, it was, it was like a factory, like, but not a factory in the, in the sense of a slave factory. Like yeah, everybody yeah, yeah, yeah. excited. Vernell was on that tour. She was singing backgrounds to Mary J. Blige. And I met her because there was another girl named Patricia. I can't name Patri remember Patricia's last name, but I worked with Patricia because we were doing music with uh, Jeff Robinson and his brother Conrad. They were putting together a girl group and Patricia was in that group. Mm -hmm. And um, she was on singing backgrounds with Mary J. Blige when we got in Phoenix. And I was like, hey, man, I know her. That's Patricia. And yeah, so she introduced me to Vernell, who later, when we started auditioning for, uh, hey, man, you remember Baby Girl from Mary J. Blige? Okay. I think she'd done the, the, I can't remember if she did the K song before yeah. or after that. Okay, she says she did the Touch Me, Tease Me. Um, right, but I don't yeah. know if that happened before the tour okay. or after the tour. I don't know how, how we got to her, but I remember she was in the basement over at at uh, Mufi's, uh, Melvin Dinkins, um, he was him and Shelton, engineer. They had they used to produce together on 118 in the basement of Mel's house, and that's when we went down there. And um, she was there, and she sung, man, and, and phew, she got you know what? Vanell takes me back to that that uh, Atlantic Star, Midnight Star mm. lead singer. Yeah. And when I when I heard it, it was I was like, yeah, man, okay. Yeah, yeah, no, she definitely, yeah, I did tell her yeah. when I, that, uh, yeah, that, um, yeah, Atlantic Star type of vibe, you know, when you when you have singing with a, a strong male vocalist and stuff. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for being a part of Halftime Chat. Please remember to subscribe, share, and comment. But most importantly, why don't you become a member of Halftime Chat? We've got amazing videos, amazing perks, and um, being able to support the channel. But anyway, thanks for watching. Take care. I never participated in that kind of hey, the somewhere in between. Us, or even loving us on which I did miss you. Uh, you know, with, uh, with, uh, with, uh, what was it like growing up? It I mean, I was, I, I love, I love all different jobs.